Hello and welcome back to another episode of From the Workshop. I am your host, as usual, Brandon Hart, here in our fabulous and upgraded Nimblelink Nerd Lair. And we are here to resume a previous project. Uh, you may have noticed it already here on the table, but uh, I want to let you know, in case you haven't figured it out, we are going to talk about our Let's Build project, our, our mailbox, our intelligent mailbox here that we've created uh, for our uh, wonderful client, Jane, that uh, we talked about in, in part one. So if you haven't seen part one, this would probably be a good point to stop the video, look down in the description, and go back and watch part one so that part two, the one we're doing right now, actually starts to make a little bit of sense. Uh, so I'll, I'll go ahead and give you a chance to, to do that. Okay, well, those of you who are here are either back from having watched part one or are continuing to watch this video, in which case, thanks for watching that first one. Really appreciate that. So let's talk about where we left off last time. Last time we were talking about what we were going to have to create for our client, this Jane, who lives out in uh, the, the rural areas and has a mailbox this is, that is way far away from her house. And she really needs to know not just whether she got mail, but she needs to know whether or not the uh, mystery packages that she has received from her secret admirers are melting into oblivion or are safe and, and ready for her to go pick up. Uh, whether the local neighborhood vandals have uh, had their liberties with the mailbox itself and now the mailbox is on its side in the yard. Um, whatever the case may be, right? So, how are we going to solve that problem? Well, this is the mailbox solution that we have uh, uh, partially completed. We've got the hardware pretty much set up here so that we can present this to Jane as a, as a work in progress, if you will. So, what do we have going on? Well, first thing we have going on here is we needed to be able to detect when the mailbox was open and closed. So, I don't know if you can see this right here, but uh, we have a very small magnetic reed switch, which has been placed at the top, and a magnet, which is located here on the door. So, as the mailbox opens and closes, the reed switch communicates an open and a close, or a contact and no contact back to the microcontroller that is inside the system. We also need to know, just because this opens and closes, doesn't mean that something important has happened. Um, so we need to be able to tell whether it opened because Jane put a letter in to be sent, or whether it was picked up, or whether mail has come in, that kind of thing. So we need to know the flag status. So what we've done in this case, I'll just pop this out of here real quick. So what we did in this case is added another one of those fancy little magnet type thing majiggers there to the flag and then we have inside here, I don't know if you can see that, uh, but we've got another read switch in there. So we can determine now whether the flag is up or down. So there's that. Um, lastly, we also need to know whether or not there is actual mail in the mailbox. So in that case, what I've got here is a very small IR uh, sensor. So it's able to, to determine, determine distance so that um, you can see whether there's something placed on top of it or not. Um, but that's not all, right? We needed to know whether the neighborhood vandals had, had come around and, and uh, um, taken out their anxieties and angst on the mailboxes in the neighborhood, specifically Jane's. And so also in here, I'm not gonna bother trying to show this to you because it's way back in the back, but I've got an accelerometer in there. So it's able to tell us the X, Y, and Z position of the mailbox. Is it horizontal the way it should be? Is it laying on its side on the yard? Uh, whatever the case may be. And then you may have noticed this rather odd looking contraption up above. Um, for the more astute of you in the audience, you will have noticed that this is indeed a solar panel. So we are going to be trickle charging a lithium polymer battery in this case, which will run the entire system. So you can see it's actually powering the board right now. 
and will be trickle charged through this voltage regulator. So it takes the 12 volts down to five volts that goes into the system and powers the whole board. So what about the cellular hardware? Well, in the cellular, for the cellular hardware, we are running a CAT M1 Skywire modem in a, 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 the M1 DK, which is the development kit, which is now set up as an Arduino shield running on an ST micro nucleo uh, development board, so a microcontroller. The beauty of all of this is that these are off the shelf parts. You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to create new hardware just to be able to get this little prototype here together. And so what we're able to do in this case is just kind of slap everything together. This will then sit in the back of the mailbox and, um, and then be charged from the system and have all of the signal wires run into it from all of the sensors. Good stuff. Um, next time we're going to talk about code and the code that actually runs on the microcontroller, the code that is controlling the M1 radio, the code that is reading the sensors, things like that. So you can look forward to that in the next episode. But the last part of the hardware here is obviously you're not going to want to put mail into that right there. So we have this. This is the solution <laughs> to hiding all of the mess. So. This just fits real nice and snugly in there. So now we can read everything we need to. The mail can sit right on top of that sensor and everything closes up real nice as well. That is the hardware that we have for our Let's Build mailbox project. So as I mentioned, this is not a done system yet. We still have to kind of finish up uh, connecting all the wires into the microcontroller then we have to get the microcontroller's code completed so that it's reading everything and, and sending out signals. So what should you take away from all of this? Well, one thing to bear in mind is that we've got a lot of wires in here. I don't, you may not have noticed that, but there are a lot of wires that are running around uh, connecting the sensors back to the board and allowing the sensors to be read by the system and all that kind of thing. But then we also have this little antenna sticking up off of the M1 DK here for our M1 Skywire modem. We need to make sure that when this is positioned in the system, that that antenna is facing away from all of the wiring that's inside of there. If you wrap it wires around this antenna, this antenna is no longer going to function the way that you want it to. So this is the kind of thing that we need to be aware of when we're designing the hardware for systems like this. Anything cellular that has that antenna coming up off of it, if you're gonna use a stub antenna, if you're gonna use one of the adhesive mount, the flexible antennas, whatever your system is, it needs to be able to be separated from the interference and from the wiring and from the componentry inside of the box. So we'll have this sticking up away from the board, We'll have this separated out from all the sensor wires that are running into the system and certainly away from the power wires that are running through the system so that everything will operate efficiently and properly. So there you go. That is part two of our Let's Build system or Let's Build series for the mailbox project. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and, and like the video, uh, give us the thumbs up, subscribe, leave your comments. This is... <laughs> As you may have been able to tell, this is really not uh, a full production system or, or you know, built to uh, typical Nimble Inc. <laughs> engineering specs. It is a prototype system that we're doing for fun, but what would you have done differently? Let us know in the comments. Let us know by emailing us here at uh, workshop uh, at nimblelink.com. I do know our email address. And uh, until next time, until part three, where we talk about actually getting the code together, have fun building. We sure are.